Hi, it's Chester at Blue Pecan Computer Training, and in this video, I want to look at four ways we can transpose data. We'll start off with probably the simplest way, and that's with a copy and paste special. Start off by copying your data, so select it. I use Control C on my keyboard, otherwise you can right click, copy. You can use copy up here on the home tab. Then click into a cell where you want to transpose the data. Now something to note is you can't cut and transpose, you have to copy and transpose. Now once you're in that cell, various ways to transpose, you go on the home tab to the paste button, to the little drop down, and you should see transpose in there. It's the little button with two arrows pointing across or down. So if I click on that, it pastes the data. Another way to do it would be to right click into the cell where you want to transpose and you might see transpose here as a button. If not, go to paste special and you'll probably see transpose somewhere in this menu. Failing everything, go down to paste special here, choose transpose and click on OK. I'll undo that. Another method, if none of those suit you, is to use a shortcut key. So we've already copied the data. The shortcut key would be Alt Control V. That brings up the Paste Special dialog box. Then E on your keyboard, that will tick the transpose option in the dialog box and then press enter on your keyboard and that will also transpose the data. Now, when we use this method, there is no link between your original data and the new transpose data. The disadvantage here is if I was to change Bob to Keith here, it doesn't change our transposed version of the data, but that might not be a problem for you. Our second solution is going to use the transpose function and transpose is going to work differently depending on your version of Excel. I'm in Office 365 here. So I'll demonstrate first how it works in this version of Excel, and then I'll go to an older version of Excel, show how it works there. What I do is I click into an empty cell and I select the transpose function. And then all I do is select the cells that I want to transpose, close the bracket and press enter, and it does the job for me. Now, the great thing about the transpose function is, is that it is dynamic. If I were to change Bob to Keith in this scenario, you can see that Keith does automatically update. But what if I was to add another record to the original data? And so I had James down here. You can see that I don't get James appearing at the end of my transposed version of the data. Now, there is a way around that. If I go to the next sheet, and that is to convert this original data set into an Excel table. That's easy to do. Click in any cell, go up to insert and select table. Alternatively, click into a cell, use Control T on your keyboard. The only thing you have to be mindful of here is this little tick box. Does your table have headers? Mine does, so I'll keep that ticked. Click on OK. When you do this, you get an extra tab on your ribbon, table design, go over to the table name box there, you can give the table a name. So I'll call this sales data, can't have a space. Press enter to store the name. If I now use the transpose function and select the table, you can see that it actually returns the name of the table. Close my bracket, press enter. If I add James at the bottom now, you can see, especially if I zoom out a little, that James has appeared there so I can add some numbers and the numbers will also appear. Quite a good method to use the table with the transpose function. Transpose works quite differently in older versions of Excel, so I'm going to switch over to Excel 2010. I'm in Excel 2010. Let's do exactly the same thing. Right, transpose in, select my data, close the bracket, and I get the value error. Now what you have to do in this version of Excel is first of all, select all the cells that you want the transposed values to appear in. You have to kind of know the number of rows and columns that you need. Then write the formula in, selecting all the cells that you want to transpose. But instead of pressing enter, you must use control shift enter and it does it for you. That was using the transpose function. Let's go on to the next solution. 
I'm back in Excel 365 and we're going to look at a third method. I start this method by copying the data, clicking into an empty cell. Then I need to get to paste special. Now I can do that via this menu or I can use the shortcut key control alt V. And then I'm going to click on paste link. It hasn't transposed the data. But what it has done is created a link between the original version of the data and the copied version. Now these cell references, what we want to do is replace them with a text string. We want to keep the actual cell reference, but not the equal sign. We want to replace that with a character that would never appear in a cell reference. You'll see why that's important as we go through this method. Select all the cells with your paste link references in. And then to use find and replace, I use the shortcut key control H and we want to find the equal sign in each of these cells and replace it with a character that's never going to appear in a cell reference. Let's use the at symbol, for example. And then I'm going to say replace all and click on OK, click on close. Then what we're going to do is we're going to transpose those text values. So I'm going to copy, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do just a normal transpose, paste, transpose. Then what we're going to do is replace the at symbol with an equals symbol. So control H again, and I just need to swap these characters around. Find what? An at symbol, replace it with an equal symbol, replace all, click on OK. Then I can delete these cells because I don't need them anymore. Shift cells up, click on OK. And this data is linked. If I change Bob to Keith, it changes to Keith in the transposed version of the data. This will also work the other way around where you want to transpose horizontal data into vertical data. Let's go through the same steps. I copy this. I paste a link. Control H. Placing equals with a symbol. Copy that, come down here, transpose it. Control H again, sort the symbols around. Replace all. Then you can get rid of this. You don't need it anymore. And again, the data is linked. So if I change Bob to Keith, change to Keith in the transposed version of the data. The fourth solution I'm going to look at uses the index function. Let's just look at how index works. It has three arguments. We're using the array version of the index function. Array is the range of cells that you want to return values from. And then you have a row position and a column position. So if I put one, one, that's going to return this cell here, because that's in row one, column one of that array. I do need to fix the array reference because I'm going to be copying the formula. But what I need to do when I copy this across, I would want this row reference to automatically increment. It returns Bob, Bill, Brenda, Barbara. And then when I copy down, I'd want the column reference to increment. So it returns sales 2019 sales 2020. The task we have is to get these numbers to automatically increment as we copy. The way I'm going to get around this is to use the columns and rows functions. So for the row number, I use columns and columns returns the number of columns in the range you specify. Now the range I specify doesn't really matter which range it is, but as I'm in E1, I'm going to say the range is E1 to E1, which returns one column. Now, as I copy this across, I want the column range to automatically expand. And the only way I can do that is to fix the first reference, the first E1. Let's see if that works. I copy this across. You can see now that columns is looking at E1 to F1, which returns two columns, which is the row number for Bob. Now I need to do the same thing for the columns number argument. And for that, I can use the rows function. 
and that returns the number of rows in the range that you specify. And again, I'll just use E1 colon E1, and I'm gonna fix the E1 so that when I copy down, it will expand the range that it refers to. I press enter. Now I'll copy across. That takes me to Betty. Let's zoom out a little bit. And then I can copy down. And you can see that it returns all of the data in my original table, but in a transposed layout. And these cells are now leaked. I do the same thing, I'll change Bob to Keith. It updates Keith in the transposed version of the data. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this video. Hopefully you found it useful. If you have, please subscribe and I'll see you next video.